I'm going to be showing you how to master all of the drawing tools inside of Thinkorswim. Do you ever wonder how it is sometimes that I can just double click and get a perfect price level just like that? I'm going to be showing you all of that and more. So we first need to know how to actually access all of our drawing tools. Now there's two fairly obvious ways and a third way which we'll cover towards the end of the video. The two obvious ones are first in our drawings drop down menu and then lastly if we look at this icon right here, mine is going to be the hand looking icon, right? If I pair that up with the icon happening down below here, we can access the same set of tools. So I'll show you that now. If we click the drawings drop down, I need to navigate to this sub menu called drawing tools and now we get all of our different tool options. Again, I can accomplish the same exact thing if I come down below, again, it's down here in the right hand corner, and I click the same icon that was here in our next to our drawings tab, right? So if I click on that, you'll notice I get the same exact pop-up menu. Now the tools we're gonna focus on primarily are the first four, right? So we have the hand looking tool, the computer mouse, and then a few different line options. These four are the ones that you'll be using the most. I can guarantee that right off the bat. We are gonna talk about all of our other tools, but we're gonna spend the most time on these for, uh, first four, the most important four. The first two, the hand and the computer mouse looking icon, are going to be the pan and the pointer functions. Now the pan tool allows us to just move the chart back and forth. We can go wherever we want. But one thing you'll notice, if you try to move up and down, we are constrained. Now, how do you allow the mouse to move the chart up and down? We need to unlock our Y axis here. So notice as I pan the chart, it's going to adjust for all of the candlesticks. But if I set the chart to manual mode, and you can do so up in the top right in this icon, if I click here, come down to manual and set it to manual, I can now move the chart up and down. But as I pan, it's not going to adjust that Y axis for me, and I need to be diligent about remembering where my candlesticks are actually forming. So although I have the freedom to go anywhere, just remember, if you're scrolling, it's not going to adjust automatically. I'm going to go back and set this to auto to sort of explain the pointer function, right? That's our next movement tool. If I click on this one, the pointer, it looks like a computer mouse. Now, if I click and drag with this tool, you can see I'm highlighting some of the chart, and if I let go, it's gonna zoom in on whatever section of the chart that I highlighted. Now again, if I try to zoom up and down, right, highlight up and down, it's not gonna work. But I can unlock it once again, top right, come into this little drop down, and set the chart to manual mode, and now I can zoom in top to bottom, as well as left to right, right? So there we go. I can also draw boxes, something like this, to zoom in on a specific piece of price action. So very, very flexible here with that pointer tool and what you can actually look at. I'm gonna set this back to auto and sort of make our chart look reasonable once again. So there we go. And now we'll get into our actual drawing tools, the ones that will put lines on your chart. We're gonna start with the trend line tool and get pretty deep into it, but most of the settings here that we'll cover do apply to the rest of our drawing tools. So we'll activate the trend line tool and right off the bat you'll notice that our cursor turns into a pencil. That is the correct thing that should happen when your cursor is a pencil. It means you will be making a drawing on the actual chart. If I click once to anchor a first anchor point, it brings up a little box. Now just notice as I move this trend line around, all of the information in that box starts to change, right? But just remember that box for a moment. When I click the second point of the trend line, it disappears. And now we have a red line on our chart. It's, it is in fact a trend line but it's not really customized maybe the way that you want it. So how do we actually do that is the question. You're gonna hover over the trend line, right click, and come into edit properties. And this is gonna bring up a dialog box where we can pretty much change anything we want about this line. I'm gonna first, you know, first off change the name. We'll call it test. And I wanna do this for a specific reason because you'll have a number of different trend lines sometimes and you want to know which one that you're looking at. You can give it a name to clear up any confusion. But as we'll see in just a moment, the name on the trend line will never really be shown unless we click into this uh, dialog box. After that, we have a few options of how the line should actually look, what properties it should have. So we can put an arrow on either end or no arrow at all. For the sake of the video, we'll put one on the left-hand side but again, just know you can put an arrow wherever you'd like. So we'll turn that on. 
and label position, if you remember that information box that popped up when I clicked the first point and all the values changed, that is our label. So right now it's set to on the left. Now, what does on the left mean? It simply means that if I move this dialog box here for a moment, our label will be anchored to the left hand anchor point of the trend line. If I drop it down, we have on the right and in the middle. And as you guessed it, that simply means it will anchor in the middle of the trend line or at the right hand anchor point. <laughs> Next up, the show label option is going to give us the opportunity to actually see that information box. And by default, it's always set to never. I'm going to just put label on the right for now. So it's set to never by default. We can either turn it on always, on hover, or never. So we'll put it on hover for now. And what that means is as we hover over the line, you can see it gets a little bit brighter. This little box will pop up. But our label, that information box, will also pop up when we hover over it. You can see it gets dim when I hover off, brighter when I hover on. Left extension means that this line will continue to the left forever. Now, if I turn it on, we won't be able to see our left hand arrow as distinctly. So for example's sake, we'll keep it off, but we will turn right extension on, which as you guessed, will extend the line to the right forever. Now here's where we can get pretty specific with the values of our line, where we want it to start and where we want it to end. The value itself is going to be the price level. So let's say, see, you can see here I had 374.98. Let's say I was really going for 375 as the value. And let's say I wanted this line to start on the 12th instead of the 11th. So that's gonna adjust it in, in terms of the time axis. You can also get very specific with the hour that it was set. So we'll just make it 15.30, a nice round number. The endpoint can do the same exact thing. We'll set this to 377, the whole dollar, instead of that 377.10, and we will change the end date here to the 15th instead of the 14th, and once again, we'll just bump this up two minutes to be 1250 on the dot. Now here is where you can change all the visual aspects of your line. You have curve properties here, which give us the ability to change color, style, and width. So right now, we'll just change this to a crazy color. If we click into more, we have all of these options here, but even further than that, you can change the HSV, the uh, HSL, all these different you know, color methods, color spaces that you can work in and change the value to whatever you want. So we'll make some crazy red up here maybe. We'll click, actually that's too similar to what we have. Let's go to RGB and get a crazy magenta. There we go. We will click OK. Now you can see here that the color has changed. You can also set the style of the line to solid, dashed, or dotted. For example's sake, we'll go with dashed and again, the width. Now, typically I prefer to have a one width and I'll show you how I set mine up uh, in just a moment here. But for example's sake, we'll go with five. So we'll set width to five. Now, all of our settings have been changed. We know what should happen when we click okay. So watch the red line as I click okay and boom, it should adjust a little bit. You know, we changed our price levels. So if we look here, the right hand anchor point is right at 375. Remember, if you pair that up with our Y axis over here, 375 is the magic number where this starts. Our right anchor point, once again, is going to be the show label on hover. So as we hover over it, we can see that it is indeed at the 377 mark. Again, pair that up with what's happening right over here. And we got our color. We have our arrow on the left-hand point. We're continuing to the right forever. And once again, as we hover over the line, that is when our information box shows up on the right. Now, how do I actually like to set these up for myself? If we come and right click back into edit properties, how I like to set them up is no arrow, label position, it doesn't matter because I always keep it off, or excuse me, never, set to never, which is essentially off, right? I find it's a little bit too distracting, so off is good. Left extension will be off, right extension will be off, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. Our begin and end values aren't as important because we will just manually click them. And then curve properties. Here's how I like to set mine up. I like a cool gray on top of a black background, and I prefer a dotted line with a width of one. That way they're differentiated from my price levels, the horizontal levels. Now, once you have this set up the way you'd like, just click on save as default. And you'll notice reset to factory default is grayed out right now. If I click save as default, it pops up because now this is going to be the default. And if I reset, we would just be going back to that simple uh, red line that we started with. So I'll click OK. It should change the properties. You can see the line is now much more subdued and how I like them on charts. If I go ahead and click at an anchor point, 
and drag it out, you can see I get the information box, but as I click the second point, it retains the same exact um, you know, properties as the line we just set here because we saved it as default and that box goes away. The information box goes away because I set that to never show, even on hover. Now, one thing that's pretty important here, we showed you how to get very precise with the actual data points that you're using. There's another way that you can do that. If I just remove these lines, again, you can just right click, remove drawing, right click, remove drawing. There's another way to get very precise with your drawings. If we come into the gear icon in the top blue bar, this is going to allow us to open up our settings. And here, we have an option to snap our drawings to specific points. Now, I will just say that I leave mine to none. I do not like the snap personally. I find that it makes uh, you know drawing trend lines a little bit too difficult. I like to have a little bit of wiggle room. But if you're someone who likes that, you can set your snap to a number of things. You can go to the bar center, which will be smack in the middle of the candle, OHLC, which means it will snap to the top of the wick, the close, the high, <coughs> excuse me, just any of your OHLC values, right? Open, high, low, and close. We can also choose tick, which just, just means, uh, you know, any dollar value or any value that shows up on the y-axis, which is almost equivalent to none. So for example's sake, we'll go to OHLC, which is going to snap to the top or bottom of our wick or the top or bottom of our body. If I click OK, you'll notice now, if I go ahead and click like here, and then I click, you know, or get close to clicking here, you can see it kind of jumps to the lower end of that wick. See, so it jumps there, or it jumps here. It can jump to the uh, close, in this case of the red candle. If I come to the highs, you can see it snaps to that high of candle. If I come backwards in time, again, you can see it kind of snapping. So you can set this however you'd like if you prefer to be precise. Uh, again, it, it's really up to you and how you like your settings. Again, I do not like mine like that, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back off. Now, everything else from here on out should be simpler because we've gone through the majority of all of our settings. So I'll turn that back off, and now we'll hop into our price level tool, which is the second, um, you know, it's the dollar sign with the line under it, and I believe that this is probably the most used tool in the entirety of the platform, right? So we'll click on that, and we already know how to adjust all of our settings. If we click once, we get this sort of red line on here, which again is the default and it's okay, but it's not telling us all the information that we want and it's not as custom as we'd like. So if I right click, come into edit properties, it's a very, very similar thing. Now here, if I give this price level a name, we'll call this one test once again, you'll notice as I turned on the label on our other drawing, the trend line, that test name never showed up. But if I turn on the name here for our horizontal price level, we can actually make this show up. Once again, I'll keep left extension off. I'll keep right extension on. Show name. I will show the name on the right. And whenever you're drawing lines, I would really advise you to show the name, show the value, show whatever on the right-hand side. Because as you start moving through time, your left anchor point may get lost uh, somewhere in the chart, right? So on the right is always what I would advise. Now, if I click on show price, this is going to show this value here on the actual price level. So this is how I set mine up. I always turn that to, once again, on the right, not the left. And, um, you know, we, we've already covered the majority of all these other settings, right? We can actually fine tune the value here. We can set the date for when we want it to start and end. Again, remember that if we are drawing a horizontal level, and the right extension is on, our end point in terms of date doesn't really matter. Curve properties, again, we can set these to whatever we'd like. We'll just set it to green for now. We'll make it a dashed line again for example's sake, and we'll put a width of three. So we'll hit OK. Now you can see we get a change in the line. So we have the green, we have the dash. Here's our name. Remember, we have test showing up now, and actually a price value in parentheses. So this is all well and good, but how do I like to set mine up? How do you see it in the weekly watch list, in my own analysis, so on and so forth? I'll show you those settings right now. Edit properties. Uh, I'd never really name them for a reason you'll see in a moment. Left extension is always off. Right extension is always on. Show name is always set to do not show. Really, I don't really you know, name my price levels because the price level itself is actually enough information for me. So I always leave show price to on the right. The value, again, this is going to depend on the level that we're drawing. In terms of curve properties, I always keep them as cool gray, 
solid lines to differentiate from the dotted one we used as a trend line, and then our width I always put to one. Now once again, remember I can save this as a default, and now if I click OK, it will change this line, and any line I draw in the future, again now I can just simply double click, and I get a line, I have a gray line, extends to the right forever, and I have a price value attached to the right hand side. Now one thing about this, if I right click on the line, and I come into cancel right extension, that's pretty much going to be a shortcut, save you a little time from going into the edit properties and turning right extension off. But because I double clicked in the same exact spot, when I click cancel right extension, what do you think is going to happen? Essentially, we're going to have a point in time with no sort of horizontal level. So watch this. Cancel right extension. Our line disappears because I clicked in the same exact spot. And we're just left with a little price label here at that specific point that I clicked. So going forward, if I want to do something like that, I will remove this drawing for now. But I will have to click once and then drag my second anchor point out a little bit. Remember, if right extension is on, it doesn't really matter where we place this point. But if I click now, right click, cancel right extension, now my line has been constrained to those two parameters we have here and here because that's where my second click was. Again, a few more options that you can explore in here are extend to the left, does the same thing but to the left, we'll turn that back off, and as well as you can duplicate the drawing, right? So if I want the same exact line, the same exact width, I can just come in here, click duplicate drawing, I get the same exact thing, and now I can put it wherever I'd like. Now what about this option as well? We have activate drawing. Now what this is going to do is activate the properties and I can once again move our second point wherever I'd like. I can move the first point wherever I'd like. Basically I can do whatever I'd like with the line without having to draw a brand new one. You'll also notice that our price value adjusts as we move up and down the Y axis, the price axis. So I can click off of it to save that. Another way that we can do the same exact thing is if we come back into our move tools and get the hand, the pan tool, and if I double click on this or just single click, excuse me, I get that activate, uh, you know, the activated properties once again. So I can do whatever I want with these points. Remember that if you have this set to snap to the high, basically the OHLC values of our candles, which is open, high, uh, close, and low. I'm probably saying that out of order, but it will snap to the bottom of a candle perfectly. It will snap to the close perfectly, the high or the open. Regardless of where you're trying to put it, you can get that perfect snap to the level. Again, I prefer to keep that off. But now we know how to access a majority of our settings here and tweak all of you know the appearances and the actual way that our trend lines as well as price levels work, look, and we can save them as a new default. So we have all the basics out of the way. Again, you can remove all of your drawings by right-clicking, remove drawing, or if you want to clear everything off of your screen, you can simply come into clear drawing set. So if I click this, everything on our screen will disappear for the moment. So go ahead and click clear drawing set. We get prompted, are you sure? I'm going to click yes, and everything disappears. So now we're with a blank slate, and we can move on to more of our uh, sort of, you know, maybe you want to call them advanced. I would just call them sort of useless tools, right? We have the ability to draw a time level. All this is going to do is draw a level vertically. So again, by default, it's set to red. If we click edit properties, we get the same exact settings that we would have had with any of our other tools that we've already covered. We'll cancel that. Our next one will be the text tool. This one is actually kind of interesting. If you want to make a note on the chart, you can click. You can come into enter note. We'll just say this is a test and we will click OK. Now when that happens, we get our text on the screen. But what if we want to edit the actual properties again? Come in, right click, edit properties. We can change a number of things. We can name the text note, edit the text, display all of the text, the first line only, or just an icon. Again, you can turn this arrow here on or off. You can align the text. I mean, poke around with these options. It's really quite impressive what you can do here. You can even change the font, color, size, all of this good stuff. Okay, and remember, you can always save something as a default if you would like. I'll cancel that. Uh, we'll come back into our menu. The next one will be our arrow tool. This is simply going to draw an arrow, right? So if I click once, I just get an arrow. Click once, I just get an arrow. The properties here are, again, very similar. We can have a name, a value with a date, and then we can set the direction, color, as well as size. You can go all the way up to extra large, which I still feel isn't really that large. So we'll click OK, 
And you'll notice it grows a bit, but really not that much. So do with that what you'd please. Next up, oval and rectangle are going to be extremely similar. If I click on oval, uh, we'll just go through the settings here. I get two points. I can make this really long, really tall, kind of circular if I space it out correctly. And by default, it is going to be a white circle. But most importantly, keep in mind that the circle will appear behind the candlesticks. It's not going to cover it up. It will just float behind there. So if I right click, edit properties, once again, I can change the name, all of the points and the color. Now it's important to note here that if you make the color the same as your candlesticks, it will appear as those, you know, as though those candlesticks have disappeared. But in reality, again, this, the oval is behind your price action. So always remember that. Same thing happens with our rectangle. So just for example's sake, we'll draw in a white rectangle by default there. Um, next up, we have our channel, right? So this is going to have the same exact properties pretty much as our trend line. I'm going to go ahead and clear this drawing set. Again, you can do that by right clicking, coming into clear drawing set, or if you forget that, maybe you come into the drawings tab and you can just come into um, remove drawings and then you can clear the drawing set. You can clear old drawings, which will be uh, specific to a time period that you set. So we'll explain that quickly. If we click old drawings, we get this dialog and we can remove any drawings that are older than a specific number of days. Now there's nothing old on this chart. So you can see here in this line of text, it says six drawings, zero old will be removed. And then you can of course set notifications for, you know, if there are a certain amount of drawings on your chart, maybe you want to clean it up. You can notif uh, set notifications here as well, but that's how that would work. You can also in this dropdown, which is pretty cool, remove specific uh, types of drawings. So if I come back into here, I can remove just the time level. I can click OK. You'll see just the time level gets removed. If I come back in, remove drawings, I can remove the arrows, right? So if you want to remove a specific drawing type, you can do that in this menu. Uh, but again, we're just going to come in and clear the entire drawing set and start for, uh, from scratch for our channel tool. Again, the channel will act almost the same way as our trend line tool, right? You can see everything's very similar. And if I click another time to anchor that point, um, it looks like I, I triple click. So hang on, click one, click two, and then I drag. So it's a little deceiving there. So if you click and you don't see anything happen, make sure you drag, and then you'll get that second portion of the channel. Now I can move it above and below, and you can see as we extend into time, our channel is getting a little bit longer as well. So keep that in mind. You can edit all the properties in here as you would with a regular trend line with anything else. Um, label positions, we have name, extensions, begin and end. The height, this is the uh, sort of difference in the channels, right? The, the distance that's here. So that is your height. You can again, change the colors. And here's something pretty cool too. With our channel, you can actually put in a 50% mark. So that's gonna be your coefficient 0.5. I can check that off. Once again, I can change the color. We'll just make this a yellow because it's 50%. We'll change the style to dotted line and keep the width at one. Again, you can save anything as a default. Always remember that. That's a really powerful feature here. So you don't have to edit your settings every single time. So we'll just do it for now. We'll click OK. And now we have a channel line smack in the middle, right? 50% of our channel. If we go to draw another one, let's say I click once, twice, drag, and we get three times you can see once again that our 50% mark is showing up because we saved that as default. Now, another way that you can undo your drawings is by simply coming in here and undo whatever drawing it is that you just did. Undo edit channel, and then we'll come back in and undo add channel. And a shortcut for that on your keyboard, for any of you keyboard shortcut people, is going to be control Z. All right, so we'll move on through the rest of sort of our tools. We have a regression line. This one is going to watch what happens here. I'm going to click way up here, but it's not working. If I click in the candle though, it is working. So a regression line is something that's going to require you to sort of click within a candlestick to set the first point. And as we move, what it's doing is taking a regression essentially of all of the candle values that we've put in. So as I move it, you can see it flattens and adjusts to whatever it, you know time it is that I'm sort of extending through. The way you would use this, you know, is if you're maybe a mean regression trader, you watch for prices to re regress, right, back to the line. So again, you can edit all the properties the way you would with anything else. You can set the length, and here you can also set 
uh, the color and the endpoint, all that good stuff as we could with any of our other drawings. What we can also do is set where we want to use the value from, which is here in our price tab. If I drop this down, you can see we have all of the different values and even sort of an average price for the day, the high and the low over two, which is going to be the middle of the candle. So if we click that, watch the red line, it will adjust as I click OK. You can see it slightly tweaked there because we're using a different calculation. Next up, we have the regression channel. Again, this is one that you might use. It's very similar to the channel, but it's going to be a regression line as our starting point. We'll draw in something very similar, but now you'll notice we have channel top, channel bottom, and the regression line through the middle. You can change those values once again in here with our coefficients. All of the other stuff applies. We once again have the ability to change the mode of the calculation of the coefficient as well as the regression line in the first place. Okay, so very, very um, flexible here. If you're going to use a regression, you probably know the math behind it, right? So you would be familiar with all of these values as well. Here's how you access them and change them. Uh, next up, we will once again clean the chart up. So clear drawing set. OK, and we're starting from scratch. The rest of these tools after our Fibonacci's are going to be, in my estimation, fairly useless, but we will cover them. Fibonacci retracements are first. This is something that I use fairly often. If we click at a high and drag, you can see we get all of these different levels that are drawn for us. How do you edit which ones you want to show up? This is a fairly common question. If we once again right click, come into Edit Properties, here is where we have all of our options. If we don't want something to show up, we can simply uncheck it from our visible um, checkbox, right? And again, these are going to be all of your uh, retracement levels. I prefer to focus on the golden ones, so the 38.2, the 50, and the 61.8, everything else other than one, I will turn off because one, of course, is going to be the bottom or the top of the move. You can set your colors here. You can, once again, maybe you want the 50% to be yellow, uh, and maybe you want that to be a dotted line and we will save this as default. If I click OK, you can see it cleans everything up. Now we have that yellow dotted line for the 50, and all of our values are the ones that we want. It extends all the way to the right, but not the left. Again, if we come into here, right click, we can also just cancel or uh, the right extension or extend all the way to the left. So nice little shortcut here. If I uh, you know, extend to the left, boom, there we go. If I cancel that left extension, there we go. I can also, on the Fibonacci retracements, do something like this. Right click on a level and then hide the curve of the 61.8. This is something that, again, is a little bit of a shortcut if you don't want to jump all the way into that menu. So hide and you'll see it goes away. If I want to turn it back on, though, I do have to go back into our edit properties. There is no turning it back on from the shortcut method. So just keep that in mind uh, if you plan on just simply looking at something and then comparing to uh, when it's off. So we'll next go over our Fibonacci extensions, which are going to be extremely similar. Uh, just require one more click. The Fibonacci extensions here, we will start from a low point. We will go to a high point, And now we will go to a pullback point. And what this is going to do is map out our same exact sort of retracement values, but to the upside off of our low, or in the case of a down move, right? If we do something like this, down and then maybe here's our pullback low, it will map them out lower. How do we edit these properties? Again, same exact thing. I hope you can uh, really poke around with these settings, right? I, what the point of this video is to make you aware of where the settings are, and now you have the ability to, instead of just being locked into me showing you what I like to do, you have the options to change this to whatever it is that you would like. So once again, you can change everything in this menu from the coefficients to the colors, uh, style, width, anything. You name it, and you can pretty much change it here in Thinkorswim. We'll click Cancel to get out of that. We didn't make any changes. We will clear up the drawing set, and now we'll rapidly go through the last few on our drawing list. The next, you know, these ones, again, I'm not really sure why you would use them. Um, if you're maybe into, you know, some, if, maybe if you're in tune with some magic source, you, you know the sequence means something to you. Hey, all the power to you, but again, I don't know why you would specifically use a Fibonacci sequence through time, but that's how you would do it. Um, uh, the next one will be a sort of a weird one, right? It's going to be the same thing, 
but our extensions will be much different based on how we draw this, right? So we can see that extends. You can, again, change all the percent values, whether or not the label and the time shows on the top, edit properties. Again, you pretty much have unlimited options in here. Show coefficient, again, those are our labels on the bottom. Show date, those are the labels at the top. You can turn them off at the bottom. I mean, you name it, you can pretty much do it here, once again, inside of your edit properties menu. What else do we have under uh, some of these more weird tools? This one, um, let's see what happens here. So pretty much the same thing, right? Extensions through time, didn't really do much different there. Again, I'm using my Control Z keyboard shortcut to edit and undo those things that I've just done. Uh, this one, the Fibonacci fans, again, maybe these have some use to you as trend line support, but watch, if I do something like this uh, to do the original dashed line as trend line support, we have anchor point, touch one, two, when it's violated, you know, no support, no support, no support. You know, maybe I don't have this configured properly, but again, I would prefer to just draw in manual trend lines, which you know how to draw in and change all the properties too. So we'll just remove that. Um, so Fibonacci fans, the Fibonacci spiral, this is probably the most useless tool in the entire platform, right? Like what are you gonna do with a spiral like that? Uh, again, maybe you're in tune with something I'm not, but I'm not sure of the use of that. Next up, we have the Andrews Pitchfork. Now, this one's kind of uh, okay, I suppose. If you draw in a trend line like this, and then you do something like this, uh, maybe you're trying to gauge you know, where this pullback, if it bounces, where it would go in terms of a channel. There you go. There's kind of your channel. But again, you would just draw that in with a trend line or the channel tool in the first place. Not entirely sure why you would need Andrews Pitchfork for that. Next up, we have, and the last one, is going to be our cycle brackets. Now, this one... Uh, maybe it has some value to you. Basically what you can do is set this hump to whatever width you'd like, right? And this is in terms of time, not in terms of price, but in terms of time. So if I click, that's cool. I get these humps, but let's say you want to be someone who looks at, let's say 10 candles in a row and then analyzes the next 10 candles in a row. If I come into edit properties on this specific one, I can change the draw as to lines and what, uh, let's say again, we wanna look at 10 candles, so I'll change the period to 10, and we will set, you know, everything else is fine. We'll save that as default. We'll click okay. And now we have 10 candles in a row that we can sort of look at. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. 10 cycles of candles evenly divided up. So Thinkorswim will show you weekly amounts, right? Five candle increments, monthly increments, yearly increments. But if you wanna make a custom increment, maybe this is the tool for you. So those are all of our tools, right? We know how to access them from the bottom. We know how to access them from the top. But what about that third way that I was telling you about in the earlier part of the video? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that now. If we come into our settings tool and we come into, again, the bottom settings, and we look at this option right here called my tools, Right now it's set to off. If you go ahead and turn that drop down on, we can see on each chart or in a single panel. And just for the sake of this example, turn on on each chart. So we'll turn that on, we'll click okay, and you'll see at the very top of our chart, it just disappeared, uh, we get a drop down, right? So there we go, I have this drop down now that I can pin, so I will turn that pin on, which means it will stay up there, I don't need to hover anymore and I get all of the different tools up here that I want. If your pinned bar does not show any of these tools by default, you can change that by clicking on the gear icon in the top right. If I click on that, I now have the option to edit any of these tools. So the four most popular, maybe we want those up there. We have pan, we'll change this one to change button action, drawing tool, pointer. Uh, we will set this one to instead of arrow, change button action, drawing tool, trend line. We will add a button, drawing tool, and we will add the price level, right? So there are our four most common drawing tools that we use added to the top. Now, you might have seen here as I click drop down, you can do almost anything you want. You can make this a study button, a study set that you maybe have saved, a style that you've maybe have saved. I mean, you name it, you can pretty much do it with this pinned bar. But in terms of drawing tools, that's how you would populate them up there. I'm gonna click done, and now you can see I have the pan shortcut. Now I have the hand and I can move price anywhere because remember, we are on manual mode. Maybe I wanna quickly switch to price level. I just click that, I have the tool now. I can just double click and get my price level. I can double click down here, set another one. We know how to edit all the properties there, and that's pretty much the third and final way that you can get into 
all of your different uh, price tools, right? It's pretty convenient, pretty handy if you don't want to come all the way to the bottom right, click the menu, and then pick something from here. Maybe you just set the ones that you want up here in the pinned bar. Now, one last thing before I go, I want to talk about drawing sets because we're here to master the entire drawing set uh, or the drawing tools of Thinkorswim. I don't want to leave you hanging with this specific drawing now or the drawing, this drawing ability, right? If we come into the dropdown of drawings, we have drawing set, right? Create drawing set. Now, what is a drawing set? Think of it as a group of drawings that you've made. It's a set of drawings. And you can cycle through the drawings if you have different things that you like to look at. So if I go ahead and click on create drawing set, I have the ability to name it. So we'll call this one test for the sake of the video. I'll click create. And now I have a blank drawing set. There's nothing on here because I'm starting from scratch. And the way we know that we're on the test drawing set is if we look in the bottom right hand corner, we see drawing set set to test. Now anything that I do here, let's go ahead and do something crazy. Uh, we'll break out the spiral for you know, God knows what reason. We'll put that on there. Uh, we'll do some other crazy stuff with a Fibonacci extension. Just make something you know that is definitely only going to be in this drawing set. So kind of madness going on in the screen. It doesn't mean anything, but the power of drawing sets is if I come into our drawings dropdown and I come into uh, drawing set, it's the first option, and I set this back to clean, which isn't going to be clean. It's going to have two white price levels on it. So I'll set it to clean. There we go. Right? I have that prior drawing set, all of the madness, saved under test. And here on clean, I just have these two white lines. If I truly want to make it clean, again, remember, I can come into right click, clear drawing set, and now it truly is a clean drawing set. If I come into drawings, drawing set, and put it to default, these are the price levels that I'm watching every single day. This is where I do the majority of my analysis. If I go to a daily chart, you can see I have all my levels here. Uh, again, this is what I use. You know how to set all of these things up. You know how to make your lines yellow. You know how to change color, width, uh, you know, the dottedness, if you want it dashed, so on and so forth. But that is how you access the drawing sets and why they're pretty useful. Once again, we'll go back to test to illustrate that once again, it did save that crazy drawing that we did. We'll go to the 30 minute time frame to make it look slightly better if you can make this look better at all. And the last thing before I go is the second way that you can uh, change your drawing set is once again in the bottom right hand corner. It's gonna be a shortcut, one last click. If we click on that, I can change it to back to default. I can change it to clean. And once again, I can change it to test. So we've pretty much covered all there is to know about our drawing tools. We know how all the tools work, we know how to change all of the properties, and we know how to, secondly, or maybe thirdly, put up this pinned bar up here, which can be very useful. It's something I'd really encourage you to look around with, play around with it, see if you want to put tools up here, see if you want to put study sets up there, do whatever you'd like, but you now have the ability to do so, which is pretty powerful. And then lastly, maybe this is third or fourth, depending on how we're counting, we know about drawing sets, right? Very important that you can switch from either a clean chart to a chart with levels or a chart that you maybe uh, like to do crazy drawings on. Who knows? You now have all of the tools in your tool belt to be able to do anything you want, and you've now mastered all of the drawing tools inside of Thinkorswim. Swim.